Good afternoon, traders. It's Bill Baruch with Blue Line Futures, and it's your midday market minute. Now, you have equities risk on, markets moving higher. Uh, S&P running into our major three-star resistance in the mid-60s. Check that out. Now, everybody's waiting for news on trade. Is there going to be some substance? That's the key word here, substance, from these uh, trade talks today and tomorrow in Beijing. Um, momentum, though, carried over from Friday. Now, we want to emphasize that the trade talks did help early Friday morning, but China did plan or denounce the plan to cut their reserve requirement ratio. That lifted markets, too. The first broad cut and since 2016, when the, remember the markets were falling in the first quarter. Uh, but then we saw further support from Fed Chair Powell, comments. Uh, we're going to get more on the Fed later this week. Wednesday and Thursday are going to be crucial days. But right now, yeah, the momentum's pushing higher. Uh, we held unchanged on the pullback. But this is a lot of, there's a lot of resistance here. And ultimately, as we talked about, we're running into those February lows across the board, the S&P, uh, the Dow, NASDAQ, and, and now the Russell as well. So this is going to be tough to break through in the first in the first test up here without pulling back at all. That's why we have major three-star resistance up here. However, if we do close above 2570, call it, in the, in the S&P, we can go another 1%. 2603, 2609, those are going to be those November lows, October, November lows. So check out for that uh, and be careful, be nimble. But again, we're running into major three-star resistance. Same thing for crude oil. We have major three-star resistance right above 50 bucks. It didn't quite kiss $50, but it is backing off from that. Good news on, on Saudi Arabia cutting production as well as exports. Now, this was also uh, data early, uh, middle part of last week that they planned or they did cut in December. So this is an additional cut. It could come in about you know 1.3 just from the OPEC and Saudi, and we could see more. So this is supportive for crude oil, but here's the problem. We haven't seen any drawdown in inventories in the EIA numbers. Friday, don't forget that. Another big, huge build in the products. Cushing has built 14 out of the last 15 weeks, and we're talking huge builds. This is not supportive for a bigger, broader rally unless we see bigger cuts from OPEC. And that's, it's potential. We could get that. But this week's inventory data is going to be crucial, especially after potentially any, any jaw boning on those numbers uh, at end of the year market uh, for last week's numbers. So this week is going to be crucial. And then lastly, touching on dollar and gold, you're seeing weakness in the dollar. We like to see that weakness in the dollar. Imagine you on Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon or heading in before that non-farm payroll number that you would see the dollar lower with that's such such a blowout number in non-farm payroll. Now, the reason is, is Fed policy. And one of the reasons why the, the market, the stock market has rallied the way it has is there's no uh, a probability that the Fed is going to actually hike rates in March. That could change if things continue to look better, but ISM non-manufacturing missed today. And uh, again, so the dollar is lower. Gold's pulling back. It's a lot of technical resistance up here. We have major three-star resistance. We've talked about it capitalize on strength, wait for a pullback for weakness, and we'd like to see about 1270 test tested there would be key for support and, and a good buying opportunity. Give us a call. We're here to help and talk about anything on the board, 312-278-0500. You can email us info at bluelinefutures.com. You can check our website for updates and you can sign up for a free trial of our research there. But remember, futures trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Thank you.